that was uh, interesting. I think is the system operated, things worked. When their EEGs were more synchronous, there was more sound forthcoming. And uh, this kind of points to what the goal was. We wanted a little higher on the left, a little lower on the right. Here we have higher on the left, lower on the right. Again, because left is the sum, the EEGs are added together. Right is the difference when they're subtracted. But let's see what we saw in summary. This was eyes open. Both the sum and the difference were somewhere around 11, and then the eyes closed. Both numbers go up. And as you can see, they tended to weave in and out a little bit. There were times when there was a little more synchrony. Minute nine, for example, we had a lot of ringing going on. The sum was larger and then it reversed. The difference was larger for a while. And then we had another period in here of a little more synchrony. And then finishing with a little period again. Not so much. Look at the average for the sum and the difference. The average if there truly had been some long-term beat-to-beat synchrony, all we would need to see is, is perhaps maybe up to a half a microvolt or a microvolt of difference. That would have been extremely significant, illustrating some serious synchrony. Clearly, we didn't get that here. I'm not sure you'd believe me if we did. Um, but it worked quite well. There were periods of greater synchrony, periods of less. And uh, interestingly, their individual alphas, as we recall, eyes closed, were in the 10 microvolt range. And when we add and subtract them, we only get about a 50%, which indicates that they were essentially uncorrelated in the long run. But there were periods where there was a little more synchrony. Did either of you have any subjective experiences during the time when there was more synchrony? Just curious. What was your sense, uh, Richard, of what was happening? Uh, it was the images on the top. Uh, it sounded kind of, it's like a groove would form. I mean, it was just in a space and it would come down and I'd let myself just allow myself to slide into that and, and let go. Um, I would hear the beats coming, okay. and, and the colors. It mm -hmm. would almost be the same color, or more of a greenish. I mean, it's, hey, it's imagery, what can I say? Okay, do you have any of it? For some reason, I got the middle of it, that am I supposed to bring those beats? I mean, am I supposed to create the beats? Am I supposed to suppress mm -hmm. the beats? And it would periodically, you know, that's what I was mm -hmm. thinking. So that we can see that with this kind of a technique, if there's a period of time where the synchrony is just even the slightest bit more pronounced, the uh, measurement will pull it out. So you're dealing with something that's very, very subtle here. It's amazing to me what it did at the very beginning. I think, were you, uh, didn't we go from eyes open to eyes closed? Yes. Following up on, on Judith's remark, before it was more synchrony, or more connection, could we see that recording through this metric? I mean, the, the first recording of 20 minutes, could there be some difference display? Yeah, if you want, we'd like to play it back. Just yeah. a summary. I mean, can you do that? This is some difference. Yeah, because it's from the first session. session. Oh, for the first session, uh, we would we could play it back through some indifference. But if you don't have just a graph. No, we don't graph it right away. We could play it back. I understood what you were looking for. Because that would be interesting to see. But we could see differences between the first session and this session. That would well, be. Yeah, but if, 
Well, you can do it quickly, Well, we can give it a try as long as I understand exactly what the intent is. You want to play it back with some indifference? No, I was just wondering whether you could do this and you just. This thing. Same graph. Same graph. First data set. First data that you can do. I would, I could if I played back all the EEG. Yeah, I understand. So it would, would, would take a district. It would take, it would take that period of time to do the playback. I, I want to do it right now. You can play back either way. You can, we could play this one back with standard recordings, or we could play the other one back. So does, does it suggest, uh, Tom, that there's a particular way that this is best done? Uh, if it's not, if this is a harder way to get brains in sync, as it were. Yeah, this is the hardest one. Okay. This so. is this is the really hard one, and, and you know I would be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, this this one this one you know stretches the imagination. <clears throat> this would indicate that the alpha waves were synchronized beat to beat, mm -hmm. and actually each burst of a wavelength is it's as if there were a corpus callosum between them. So, and we're not even sure you want that, right? I'm not sure you want it. This is what Les does. Les Femi does this type of training. I'm not sure you'd want it. It was just kind of a, a, a interesting experiment. And I and think- And you think there's less of that that's gonna happen with Comod? I mean, that you're not- Comod gonna is gonna be much more forgiving. Much more, much all much more asking, room to move. All it's asking for is that they wax and wane together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Running a virus scan. And then, <laughs> welcome to the 21st century. <laughs> Your brains are becoming virus free, right? Now. There we go, as okay. we speak. Any, 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 